First, I want to give a huge shout out to Matt, to Cliff, to the whole DMUX team, because it's amazing to be back in person, and this year is fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, metadata. So there have been many, many talks about metadata uh, earlier today, yesterday. One more, we'll try to make it uh, as uh, fun and interesting as possible. So what is timed metadata? Timed metadata is this. Subtitles, that's the most basic way of doing metadata. And it can be taken for granted now. Everyone expects subtitles to just work because it's easy, it's just subtitles. And the FCC requires to have subtitles. It should work on any device, any player, any browser, it's easy. Mm, not so much. I mean, that's uh, a slide, uh, so I stole it uh, shamelessly from my brother-in-arms, Nicola Veil, uh, from his uh, excellent blog, the best blog about video. And that's uh, a slide that was at EBU Broad Thinking in 2014, eight years ago. Eight years ago, we are talking about subtitles and formats for subtitles. And we're talking about TTML, about SMPTTT, WebVTT, uh, HBTV, EBUTT. I mean, it was a mess. And that was only eight years ago for subtitles, the most basic form of time metadata. In 2022, what are the uh, users expecting for time metadata? Subtitles? Yes, but not only that. That's the kind of experience that the users want to have in 2022. It's a lot of time metadata. You want to, so I, I, I work a lot with sports uh, companies, leagues, uh, venues for in-venue streaming, and there is a lot of energy spent to provide fan engagement, fan experience, real augmented reality, because that's what you have here, for example, on that uh, football uh, screen. Uh, you have a scoreboard, you have a watch party with multiple people because now everyone has two cameras in their pocket. You know, there's front and back and you want to share with your uh, friends and family your experience. You want to have multiple cams, I should use that. So yeah, you can use multiple cameras and change the uh, angles. Uh, you want to be able to highlight a player and have all the stats about the player. You want to have some interactivity, uh, chatting with the people you're interacting with. You want to have instant replay, so that's live, but you can have a touchdown instantly and have live to VOD for that. It's, it's all about this uh, experience. It's a ton of metadata. We say content is king. I would say data is queen. That's where the money is. After the content, you need to provide an enriched experience with lots and lots of data. So the problem statement, and I wrote the slides before seeing the presentations, the awesome presentations from uh, the other presenters about um, time management. It's really hard to define time in a video workflow. Of course, if you take traditional workflows, you have the uh, SDI VTC time codes. Uh, but you know, it's not something you do anymore because you don't have just one production facility. You have remote production, you have your home uh, production uh, when you do the, uh, the watch parties and things like that. So it's always distributed and it's not synchronized. You cannot just synchronize the uh, SDI feeds as you would do in OB truck or uh, a production room. And there's the problem of latency. We're talking about sports. It has to be low latency or ultra latency if you want to do chat, if you want to do uh, watch parties, it has to be sub-second and to a latency. Um, and you have so many uh, elements in the chain. You have latency at the encoding, at the packaging, on the CDN, on the player. You always, you always want to have a balance between the user experience and the latency. So it's a real problem. So another dated <laughs> joke. We can create a new standard. So I know you all, I mean, Vittorio used uh, that slide. Uh, so I won't put it here. Well, okay, I can put it for the two people who've never uh, seen that slide before. But we don't want to do that. I don't want to create a new standard. I don't want to do the uh, subtitles wars 
again, it serves no purpose. So let's try to see what already exists in the field. And here, we're talking about KLV metadata. And it's used by this kind of device. What's that? A drone, an unmanned air system. Or you can see it's a camera with wings. <laughs> and there is a lot of data that needs to be timed metadata that needs to be transferred with a drone. It has to be synchronized at a massive scale. That's um, it's 1,500 drones synchronized uh, by Intel. Uh, it has to be ultra latency. It has to be reliable. If you think about the previous slide under the wings, there were things that are a bit scary. So you have to be sure that everything is reliable. Uh, and it already works. The prime is, um, so there is a standout, an SMPT uh, standard with KLV uh, metadata, key length value, which is awesome because you can basically put any kind of information of time metadata with key length value. It's um, future proof, really. It's a binary data that can be embedded in the uh, video streams at several levels. We'll talk about that. And for the, um, the military drones, they have a universal data set and they have local data sets. And they um, defined a grammar to uh, tell exactly what they can do. Uh, it's you know, all about the uh, altitude, latitude, longitude, um, all the information you can pass. They defined that uh, grammar. And it's embedded in the video stream. And you have two ways of doing that. Because again, you have a big chain from the camera with the wings down to the player. And you want to have uh, the uh, encoding, packaging, the delivery format that can be you know, repackaged in different formats from the contribution formats. So you want to embed that in the video stream. And there are two ways to do that. You can do that in the uh, SCI or NALU uh, information. The limitation is you're going to be limited if you have megabytes of content. It might be a limitation with the, um, the bitrate you have on your uh, compression codec. Uh, or you can use a new PID along with the audio and video PID. You can have a metadata PID where you could put that information in. All right. So Again, it was defined and tailored for drone applications. And they have hundreds and hundreds of uh, data uh, that are already classified and used by the uh, whole industry. Um, and I just want to do the same for the uh, media and entertainment industry, and especially for sports. There are already alternative solutions. But again, it's going to be depending on the format you're using. And I want to have just one format that could be repackaged without losing the information. Uh, you can use PTS and PCR. You can use HLS uh, program date time. You can use uh, the present presentation time offset. So that's really about uh, multi-cam synchronization. You can do e-message box on uh, the, uh, the dash format as well. But again, it's going to be really depending on the packaging format or the delivery format you're going to be using. So we want to have something. Uh, that is existing, already used in uh, different uh, workflows. So for example, uh, MXF uh, uses KLV already for the exact same reasons. It's because it's something that is future-proof. You can always extend it. If you don't know what the key means, you can just ignore it. And because you have the length of the key, well, the length of the value of the key, it's very easy to skip it if you don't understand what it means. So what's the next step? The next step is uh, we want, first of all, to have the same definition for time and use what uh, KLV uh, calls the, uh, the PTS. So it's the precision timestamp. It's not the presentation timestamp. I know it's confusing, but it's what it is. Uh, you can synchronize that through NTP or PTP. Yes, there are still challenges. Uh, about that, I know uh, when you have leap seconds, for example, it might not be well uh, supported, but we'll uh, try to find solutions. And we need to agree what's the best format at every level in the chain. 
we need to agree if we want to use SCI or if we want to use a new PID. We want to agree about the data sets. We want to do the equivalent of the uh, military grammar for sports or any other application. But there is a real need for sports today because of those multi-camps, because of all the uh, betting, all the money that is invested in sports. And we want to define a way to do that with um, all the uh, different sports that you have. So that if you have a basketball game, you can have a dunk. If you have um, a football game, you can have a touchdown, and, uh, and so on and so on. So what I'm proposing here is to um, have a consortium of people who are interested in that. We started um, a LinkedIn group. Uh, so you can scan the QR code. It's going to LinkedIn. Um, you'll see there is a demo because we have already deployed um, KLV in some use cases. So you can see a demo on that uh, screen. And I want everyone who's interested in that new uh, community-driven standard to uh, chime in. I want to hear from encoders, from packages, players. I want to provide some sample content. I want to have some sample data sets. And that's my ask to you. Please help me make the world better with time metadata. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.